Good morning, we want to start the service. Please remain seated. Brigitte will start us with our first hymn. You may sing along as long as your masks are on, please. No, the way is long. Let us boldly approach the throne of God where we will find His grace and mercy. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we are easily distracted in the wilderness of our lives. By every call to go this way or the other way, to turn stone to bread, forgive us, Father, when we get distracted from our task that you have entrusted to us. We pray, Lord, have mercy. O God, instead of following where you lead, at times we follow the tempter who shows us a vision of the world that is a mere counterfeit of what your desire for us is. Father, forgive us when we get deceived and enticed by the imitations of love, abundance and joy. We pray, Christ, have mercy. O oh God, when you have not answered in the ways or in the times we desire, we have been tempted to lean on our own understanding and acknowledge 
and not acknowledge you in all our ways. Father, forgive us when we sought to control our own lives, to order our own steps, ignoring your wisdom, pushing aside your guidance. We pray. Lord, have mercy. Heavenly Father, we come this morning into your presence, clinging to your promise, what you promise us in Psalm 91. Those who love me, I will deliver. I will protect those who know my name. When they call on me, I will answer them. I will be with them in trouble. I will rescue them and honor them and show them my saving power. <coughs> Heavenly Father, for this assurance, we thank you. You know our hearts. You have knitted our inmost being and you know our deepest desires, fears, and worries. Help us this Lenten season into a new awareness of your presence in our lives. Save us from our own temptations so that we may follow your, you more freely. Lord, to you belong all glory and honor forever and ever. Amen. We now hear the gospel read. The Gospel is written in chapter 4 of the Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus was led up by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. He fasted 40 days and 40 nights, and afterwards he was famished. The tempter came and said to him, If you are the Son of God, command these stones to become loaves of bread. But he answered, It is written, One does not live by bread alone but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. Then the devil took him to the holy city and placed him on the pinnacle of the temple, saying to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down, for it is written, He will command his angels concerning you, and on their hands they will bear you up, so that you do not dash your foot against a stone. Jesus said to him, Again it is written, Do not put the Lord your God to the test. Again the devil took him to a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their splendor. And he said to him, All these I will give you if you will fall down and worship me. Jesus said to him, Away with you, Satan, for it is written, Worship the Lord your God and serve only him. Then the devil left him and suddenly angels came and waited on him. This is the gospel. Let us stand and let us together confess our Christian faith with the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty, from where he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. Brigitte is going to lead us um, in this hymn. I ask you can also sing along again. Um, the words may look not familiar, but it is on a familiar tune. It's on the tune, The Lord is My Shepherd. Let us sing together. Oh Lord, throughout these forty days, you prayed and kept the fast, inspiring penitence for our sin, and freed us from our past. You strove.
bow our heads and let us become still in the presence of our Father. Our Father, you are our creator, our sustainer, but also our saviour. And it is you who lead us through this Lenten season. Lord, as we trudge through the stuff of our life, we pray, show us, guide us, remind us of your presence. Lord, we ask that the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and your unconditional love and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all now. Amen. Amen. Dear friends in Christ, Jesus has just done the unthinkable. He tied a towel around his waist, took a basin, got onto his knees and washed his disciples' feet. The disciples are amazed. They are stunned. They are talking with excitement about this act of love that Jesus did while sharing a meal together. All seems a sinful bliss. But that's all to change. Let us hear what happens after this as it is written in the Gospel of John chapter 13 beginning at verse 21. After Jesus said this, Jesus' spirit was troubled and he testified, Very truly I tell you, one of you is going to betray me. His disciples stared at one another at a loss to know what Jesus meant. One of them, the disciples whom Jesus loved, was reclined next to him. Simon Peter mentioned to the disciple and said, Ask him at once what it means. Leaning back against Jesus, he asked, Lord, who is it? Jesus answered, It is the one whom I'll give this piece of bread that I have dipped in this dish. Then dip, dipping the piece of bread, he gave it to Judas, the son of Simon Iscariot. As soon as Judas took the bread, Satan entered him. Jesus told him, what you are about to do, do it quickly. But no one at the meal understood why Jesus was saying this. Since Judas was in charge of the money, some thought Jesus, Judas, Jesus was telling Judas to buy what was needed for the festival, to give something to the poor. As soon as Judas has taken the bread, he went out and it was night. So here, our sermon text. Dear friends in Christ, Jesus drops a bomb among him and his disciples. Jesus shares with them a hurting reality. One of you will betray me. Jesus' spirit is troubled. This means the heart of Jesus is wounded by the, a betrayal of one of his most trusted friends in his midst. The disciples all become suspicious and restless. Who might it be? Is it one of them? Jesus tells them, it will be the one whom I give this piece of bread that's the one who will betray me. And Jesus took the piece of bread and gave it to Judas. Judas, whom Jesus entrusted with the money, betrays Jesus. Judas has wounded the heart of Jesus. But what did Judas exactly do? Judas in the beginning was a faithful follower of Jesus. He yearned for God's kingdom to come so that Israel would be a mighty nation, a military power to reckon with, free from the Roman oppression. And Judas wanted to see this happen at any cost. In other words, what Judas does is he goes against the third petition of the Lord's Prayer your will be done. When we pray your will be done, it means 
trusting that God will do what is right at the right time. Judas hurts Jesus as he does not trust Jesus completely. And Judas proceeds to sell Jesus out. Darkness surrounds Judas as he turned his back on Jesus and left. The disciples are restless. They wonder if and who of them betrayed Jesus. We are rather quick as children of God to label Judas as the bad disciple, the evil one, the black sheep of the disciples. Yet, if we are honest with ourselves, there deep in all of us, myself included, there is a Judas. All up of us betray God at one time or another. We do go against His will from time to time. We too, like Judas, struggle to resist the temptation to take our own destiny into our own hands. We too wound the heart of our Saviour, sometimes intentionally, sometimes unintentionally. There are also those times in our life when we don't agree with God 100%. And the moment we turn our back on God, darkness also surrounds us. Everything seems lost in this passage. Yet I invite you to pause and to turn your attention to what Jesus does in this passage. Yes, Jesus is hurting but his reaction is quite remarkable, different to what I surely would have reacted, but different to the way that the world reacts or would expect Jesus to react. Jesus' actions amaze us. Jesus saw the true heart of Judas, and still Jesus washed his feet. Still Jesus included him in his fellowship around the table. Jesus even gave him the bread. He did not throw Judas out and told him never to come back. Rather, Jesus kept the door open. Jesus kept appealing to Judas' heart in love. Judas has a choice to accept Jesus' love or not. Ultimately, Judas chooses not to accept the love of Jesus. Dear friends in Christ, the same is also true for us. Jesus' actions in this passage remind us that despite us not following the will of God and hurting Jesus, Jesus never ever excludes us. Rather, Jesus' unconditional love keeps appealing to our hearts to accept His love, to turn back to Him. Jesus, through these actions in this passage, teaches us what the Father's love is all about. It's an unconditional love which makes a conscious choice to love despite hurting. It's an unconditional love that always keeps on appealing to the heart even when one turns away. It's an unconditional love that never excludes, even when we deserve it. It's an unconditional love that is a gift that we receive which can never, ever be earned. Dear friends in Christ, this unconditional love of God touches our hearts. It calls our hearts to turn back to God, to be touched by His love, to seek His mercy. And there where we seek God's mercy, God will answer us. 
God will be merciful. That is the promise of the gospel. Just like there's a Judas in each one of us, there's also the disciple who loved Jesus in each one of us. That disciple is John. John loves Jesus with his whole heart. And he demonstrates this love by following the will, the will of God, even in the difficult times. Even in those times when you question God. But in addition, he also loved others around him with the same unconditional love that God loves him. And he was also merciful to others. So at times in our life, we are like John. When we love the Lord, when we follow his will, by loving our neighbor and being merciful. Dear friends in Christ, in conclusion, through this Lenten season, Jesus invites us to come and see the God story, what it is all about. This morning we realize that in each of one of us there is a Judas as well who hurts God. But there's also a John in each one of us who loves following the will of God. However, the main thing that Jesus this morning shows to us, it's not about what we do. Rather, it is all about God's story. God reaching out to us in His love through making a conscious choice to love us, despite the hurt that we cause Him, to keep on appealing to our hearts, even when we follow our own head, and to keep on being merciful to us when we turn our hearts back to Him. That is what it's all about. And so God's story also becomes our story. And the peace of God and His grace, which transcends all understanding, may it guard your hearts and minds in Jesus Christ, our Lord and Saviour. Amen. Amen. Our next hymn that we want to sing is a wonderful hymn, Christ, your words of love confound us, and by on the tune of a hymn that we all know well, God has spoken by his prophets. <clears throat> Christ, your words of love confound us.
We now want to come in the presence of our Heavenly Father, and we just want to bring our concerns, our needs to Him, but also pray for one another and this world in which we live. Let us pray. Generous God, who fills the earth with abundance, oceans and sky full of water, fields that yield food, flowers and birdsong, and the beauty of all sorts, may we live with generous hearts, with open hands. Humble God, who became flesh and entered into our humanity, who touches the untouchable, spoke to the outcast, washed the disciples' feet, who keeps on reaching out in love to us, who never gives up on us, never excludes us, who is always merciful. May we live with humble hearts, looking always to the needs of others and being merciful just as you are merciful. Righteous God who longs for us to be in a relationship with you through sincere prayer, fasting, worship, scripture reading, fellowship, May we love you with all our hearts, minds, and souls. Healing God, we pray, be with those who find themselves in the wilderness of illness, those who mourn the death of a loved one, those who feel alone and cast aside, those who are overcome by darkness of depression. Be with them, comfort them, and let them experience your closeness in this wilderness. Walk with us through this Lenten season. Give us eyes to see the path you would take us. Give us ears to hear the truth you would speak us. Give us the wisdom to restore our treasure with you, so that our hearts may abide in your perfect love. Let us pray with the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. May we find the road that leads to life. May we take the turns that brings right relationships. May we pause to accompany others on the way. May we journey with God through this year's Lenten season. Receive the blessing of the Lord that goes with you wherever you go. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make His face shine on you be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favour and give you his peace. Amen. Amen. You may be seated, and let us sing together our last hymn, thereafter ask that you remain seated. May the Lord 